when we look at sums, again, we're looking at a movement over a distance. And this is uh, a new idea, I think, for many of us. Yes, numbers represent things, like five represent, could represent five apples, and three could represent another three apples, so we could have eight apples. Or you could say over here that five represents five apples, and three represents the, negative three represents the loss of three apples, so you'd have two apples. But another way to think about all this stuff is to use this idea of distance, and that's why we've been talking about the number line. Um, what's really happening in this problem right here? Well, you're starting at five, and then you're moving three to the right. The key idea here is that you're moving to the right. So in fact, addition is movement. And what happens here? We're moving three again, but this time we're moving three to the left. And what am I talking about left and right? Well, I'm talking about left and right on the number line. Let's say we had the number five. And we want to add three. Well, we're starting at five, and then we have a movement of three to the right. One, two, three, and we get to eight. So in fact, this number eight is made from a bunch of movement of numbers. What's happening here? Well, we're starting at five, but we're moving three to the left. One, two, three, and we get two. So in fact, this time two is, represent, is represented by these two numbers and the movement of negative three. So what does all this mean? Well, perhaps a new way of looking at the value of five plus three or five plus negative three is to realize, well, in both cases, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, what I'm adding, I'm really moving the absolute value of these numbers. In this case, I moved three to the right. In this case, I moved three to the left. So you move the absolute value of three or negative, absolute value of negative three. The idea is that you're going to move three units. In the positive case, you move to the right. In the negative case, you move to the left. So we can you know, make a statement using algebra <coughs> saying, listen, if you have p plus q, uh, in this case it was 5 plus 3, what it means is that you're going to move the absolute value of q. Remember, absolute value is always positive because it's a distance from 0. So going back for a second, in this case, you had negative 3. The absolute value is 3 because negative 3 is just 3 away from 0. So we can say addition, really all you're doing is moving the absolute value of q each time. So if we had 10 plus negative 11, we're going to move 11 units. In other words, the absolute value of negative 11 is 11, and that's our q right here. So we're going to move 11 units, and then it just matters if we're going left or right. Well, if it was a negative number, we go to the left. If it was a positive number, we would go to the right. So there's this idea here that we're, when we're adding, we have movement. And this is also useful, I think, for absolute value. Going back to this. And opposites. Now, opposites are two numbers that are an equal distance from zero on the number line. So we're talking about a lot of distance here in this video. So let's say we have two and negative two. The absolute value of 2 is 2 because going from 0 to 2 is 2 units. So the absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is the same because we're still going 2 units just in the negative direction. So the absolute value of negative 2 is still 2. So we call negative 2 and 2 our opposites or additive inverses. We call them this because oops, what happens is when you add up any two opposites, what you get is zero. They're perfectly balanced. Because, again, addition is movement. So look, if we're moving in two directions, a negative two and a positive two, and they're exactly equal in movement, we have exact balance or zero. What it might look like on the number line if I'm adding two opposites Let's say I'm adding positive 3 and negative 3. So we start at 0. Here's 3. Now, 3 plus negative 3. What am I going to do here? 
well, go from zero, hop to three. Now, I'm hopping up three, and but then I'm going to move to the left three times. Remember, this number also represents movement. So what does that mean? Well, I just moved to the right three times. Now I'm moving back to the left three times. And where does that bring me? To zero. So in other words, opposites, when you add them up, they'll always bring you to zero, which is why they're called the additive inverse. Uh, an inverse gives you that balance at zero. So add two opposites, and you get zero.